So let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. It's the Moortown Select Board. It's June 20th, 2022. We're here at uh, School Street at the John Pelton meeting room. John Pelton. Um, so we're going to start off with general public comments. And then we'll go to uh, Chuck, Chuck with CB Fiber. And we did have friends of the library up next who have declined the move tonight, so we have a little extra time. Chuck, yes. I have an unrelated comment. Um, I would just like to call out that today is a federal holiday, uh, and so I would love to see if the uh, select board would consider making sure it's worth at the town in, in future years. Very good. Thank you, Chuck. We, um, okay. Sasha and I. Stay down some gas, right? Oh yeah, the banks are closed at Juneteenth Day. I don't know, no, no, State, State hasn't recognized it yet. Yeah. I got mail today, so that's good. Most office doesn't recognize it. Did, did, we, did we last year give it to the um, yeah. employees? Yeah. Yeah, so Chuck, last year we recognized it. We gave it to uh, the employees for the holiday. It was a oversight this year, quite frankly. Uh, Sasha and I did talk prior to the meeting, and, we recognize it, but thank you for pointing that out. Um, but I'm, otherwise, I'm going to start with, I think uh, Travis was first. Travis, got a couple minutes. Go ahead. Um, just got uh, some concerns about uh, the select board has made it clear that they contacted the sheriff's department. Well, after con myself contacting the sheriff's department in Montpelier, June 7th, talked to Sam Hill. He says Moortown hasn't contacted the sheriff's department to, for a contract or anything, hasn't even heard from Moortown for the past eight years since the last contract. Then the next day, the chief wasn't in that day on the 7th. On June 8th, I contacted Sheriff Myers, and Myers repeatedly said the same, said the same thing as uh, Sam Hill did. So, What's going on here, and where's this twenty thousand dollars? And how come we've had many citizens within residents within the uh, town of Wartown asking for some kind of police enforcement on these back roads? We had somebody in here not too long ago, John, I don't remember his last name. Um, he uh, was begging. He said he would even pay or even put a police car up. And Sam Hill made it quite clear that yeah, they're looking for work right now since March, anyway. So here we are halfway through the year. I mean, what's going on? Well, uh, Travis, as you know, or you may not have known, we were working with the state police to have them <coughs> patrol. Um, and we had waited, and they thought they were going to be hiring some people. Um, we talked about certainly the sheriff's department in the past. Uh, and we had them working about eight years ago. And quite frankly, we weren't really thrilled with their service. And that's why we declined to go forward with them uh, any further. Um, certainly in the spring, we were already hearing uh, that local establishments, uh, I think the local courts were using Memorial County. So that certainly told us there was a lack of officers there. Um, we recently have received email from uh, uh, someone who, uh, Brett Myers, Brett Myers uh, and we'll put him on one of the next uh, agendas coming up. Uh, and we'll see what uh, what has changed there, and what they can do for us. Great. All right, Corey. Right here. Yeah, yeah. He said that um, they could give us partials. Yeah, I mean, uh, right. They just don't have to pay out or anything like that. So, right. They haven't been able to. They just recently hired someone. They think um, that they might, but let's let's see what yeah. uh, they can do and, and what kind of records that they can provide for us uh, when they do do it. Certainly. I just have a question on that topic. Um, your so name? Is oh, not on his topic. No, I understand that. What um, is your name? My name is Donald Smith. Donald Smith. Um, um, I guess when they do enforcement of back roads or whatever, does that revenue that they take in from speeding and traffic violations, does that go towards the bill that is being footed from the town towards the police department? We do get some of that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think it's almost worth hiring them. Then. Well, again, we had, I think the last time we had a contract was a, in over a two year period. I think they only issued one or two tickets to equal a couple hundred dollars. Hire those guys again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nice. So, uh, Donald, I think you were the next uh, person that came uh, for uh, open comment. Sure. 
Um, my problem, I guess, is with the town maintenance highway department. Um, I was driving on Moortown Mountain Road, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but they've been doing ditch work there uh, every year. Um, I come around the S turns at the bottom, there was a sign. I mean, it, no cones or anything, it's just a sign, no rope, no flagger, no. Uh, the only sign that was there was be prepared to stop. And thank God I was prepared to stop because the person running the case excavator that has not been driven in a couple days, thank you for taking the person out of it. Um, as I was coming around at approximately three to five miles an hour, I acknowledge he's, his boom was in the ditch doing his work. I acknowledge there's no vehicles you know, oncoming up to me. I had plenty of room to go by him. As I was getting ready to go by him, he swung out of the ditch at my vehicle and slammed his bucket down in the only path of travel that I had with no guardrail. I had my family in the car, my pregnant girlfriend in the car, and the only thing I could do is either slam my brakes on so hard that she smashes her head off the windshield or go over the bank. So that's why I did. She's not here today because she's at home and she's been in bed for almost three days now. Um, so I guess, you know, if you're running a 30,000 pound piece of equipment, for one, you should have flaggers on that corner um, that dangerous. Simple as that. Um, there should be no take your chances on an embankment or a 30,000 pound machine in your family. Um, I see no reason for what was done or for what he did. I don't know if he's even here today, I couldn't tell you. Um, but I got no phone call from him saying, hey, I'm sorry, I called the town immediately. I called the highway department manager, Chirp, uh, I can't remember the guy. Martin Kim. Yeah, I called him. Martin Kim to your left. Oh, my man. <laughs> um, so, and I guess furthermore, I never got a call like, hey, I'm sorry I had a bad day, whatever stuff happens. So not only did you do it, you didn't give up crap about me or my family or my pregnant girlfriend or what could have entailed, you know, with what could have happened with a 30,000 pound machine. How much does that weigh? I'm guessing. 28,000, that's a pretty good guess. Um, so I just, you know, and then I drive by the next day, he's right, the same guy is on the same machine doing the same job that no human, I don't care who you are, unless you own the machine and you're on your private property, you should have been on that machine. Um, no phone call from me saying, hey, I'm sorry. There was no, not even a stop, a stop on the wrist would have been, hey, call this guy up and say, hey, I'm really sorry that I almost killed your whole family. It won't happen again. I didn't even get that. Not even so much as a voicemail or, or, or nothing. And then to drive back by the next day and see him on the machine running the equipment again, not happening. Not happening. Um, so at this point, I don't want to own a machine at all. I'm not even from this town. I'm from Northfield. But any person with that kind of demeanor and that kind of attitude running a 28,000 pound machine has no right to be behind that equipment, period, at all. And that's um, where I'm going to leave it right now. So um, what are your guys' um, First, I, I, I'm very sorry and, and no one for any, uh, for any circumstances should put a boom in front of someone when they're coming down the road. The only thing to travel, that's you right. know, no place to go. Thank God you were going three to five miles yeah. an hour at the pace of a walk. Yeah. Um, because there could have been other, other problems. So I, I certainly, uh, and as you said, you yeah, haven't seen the machine in the last couple of days. He is, uh, I've asked him to come in tonight. He's gonna to come in later this afternoon or later this evening. Uh, it was too late to put on our schedule, but I'm having a Come in at the end of our, our meeting today. We're going to go into an executive session as a board, and we'll ask Martin, uh, the road foreman, too, as well. And I appreciate you coming in and sharing with us. Um, and we will uh, discuss in that at that time. And uh, you know, we do keep what we do with personnel private, but someone will get back to you and <clears throat> let you know that something's going on. Greatly appreciate it. All right. Yep. Uh, does anyone, any of us board members have anything to say? Tom, I just got to ask you to invite people in on the computer. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Thank you. See, someone listens. I've been asking every meeting for people to make sure that they see the people. I can't even see this. Meeting. I can't see it either. All right, so I admitted them all. Thank you, Travis. Um, 
So if we're all set. Uh, Mr. Smith, is there anything else? No, I'm going to grab my Harley. All right, very good. Be safe. Thank Don't you. forget your helmets about around the side. Oh, I won't forget that. We're not in New Hampshire. Okay. I made the mistake of going to New Hampshire with my wife and crossing Massachusetts state lines unknowingly. And the guy's like, and I'm like, what's the word? Maybe he thinks, you know, he's like, oh, I'm in Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you say probably in New Hampshire. They, that asphalt's as hard as this here to Vermont or Mass. They say dress for the slide, not for the ride, but I think <laughs> I don't have money for leathers. So. Live free or die. Live free or die. Yeah. Die or live free. Have a good one, guys. All right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> folks, are you, I guess, a public comment? We are on the agenda there, so. Oh, OK. okay. Very good. Uh, and Martin here for later. Chuck, yeah. why don't we go ahead and um, have you in CD5 C- or you can roll up to the table. Um, I'm going to keep my head oh, so you last week. I'm probably good, but you know, better be safe. Um, so yeah, uh, I did not receive any questions from Sasha, so I presume that uh, you know the materials were uh, looked at and, and digested, and, and I'm hoping no questions means, you know, it was pretty straightforward. Um, and so I guess at this point, I'd, I'd love to ask if the, the select board would be willing to uh, make make a vote or, you know, what, what the thoughts of the board are. Yeah, all right. Um, so let me just find I have all right, so um, again, people heard what Chuck, let me uh, just uh, let's meet people here. Um, Ray, do you have anything? I know you had some comments about CD Fiber. Uh, well, I, I saw that we sent the uh, information to uh, town attorney. Mm-hmm. Did you reply? I, I, I guess I didn't see the reply, if there was a reply from Thank the county president. Um, he had a question about a couple of things, and I don't recall exactly what they were, but uh, I was waiting to, um, if, I guess if the town attorney was satisfied with it, I was okay with it. My only, my other question to you, Chuck, was uh, in regards to that funds, uh, and, um, and I, we talked about this before, uh, you know, from, from where I sit, I think I'd like to see the funds only used on work that's in the town right away yes. and not on private property. Okay. And I, I don't, you know, I don't know if that's something we can do as a town, but you know, I, I feel like it, it, it's a town responsibility to do the work in right away or share the work in right away. I don't have a problem with that. Yep. It's, it's going up on private property that I have some issues. I, I would suggest that if the town were to decide to subsidize some people on private property to go for you know, low income folk who might need the assistance to get access to it. Um, again, the, the actual hookups are fairly pricey if you are set far away from the line, uh, or particularly if you have to go underground, um, like I would have to do at my house. Um, and so, you know, folk who might need some assistance on that, that could be a good way to use it if you were. But certainly we can figure out ways to make sure it's within the public right away if, if that's what the town prefers. Yeah. So uh, let me add to that. Um, so the attorney agreed with the, the wording of the document. I think it's just fine. Okay. Uh, but we do have uh, a memorandum of understanding MOU okay. to come up with. Um, and so that's the type of stuff that we can put on the MOU right there, right? Absolutely. Now. Okay. Yep. Um, and, and so what we'll do tonight, it, it we'll certainly go around. We have a few more questions here. But my intent tonight would be um, if the select board feels, oh, we'll, we'll be certainly voting on it, but make the commitment this evening uh, and with the, um, knowing that we'll be working on an MOU. Uh, and this states out a little bit about the, several of our wishes, but as we go along tonight, um, there may be a few other things that we want to add Great. to that. I think that sounds very reasonable. So, Kat, yeah. we can have force with no. that. Any questions? I'll get with that. Yeah. Don, I know you've been looking well, at Well, just it's just a, uh, I think we're, we're, this is planning on using the aqua funds. Is that? That's correct. You know, I mean, that's. That's how we're going to proceed with those funds. Right. This is going to be, this is $50,000 yeah. 
that the town ARPA committee yeah. uh, is Our recommending right. to us. Right. Um, they spend considerable time looking into it. Um, I, at this point, we can certainly question what they've looked at, but I think they've done a good job of uh, looking at where to spend it and what right. to do. So, um, and they have a survey out for the town. That's right. I was yeah. just going to mention that. Full disclosure, yeah. I'm also on the ARPA committee. Uh, yeah. and, and so the survey is out there. Uh, the survey is out. We're hitting front porch forum regularly. Uh, last I checked, which was two weeks ago, we had uh, 54 responses already in the two weeks since. I'm sure we've gotten some more. Um, and uh, I will say that the early data shows people were very favorable for broadband connectivity to be one of the spending points, though it's not the most popular idea. Road infrastructure is, is more popular. Um, but yeah, no, I think this, this as uh, COVID uh, showed us, there were plenty of people who were at, at their homes or trying to do school or whatever and had no service. So I think it's definitely a, a good use of the funds to support the CV fiber. John, what do you think? Um, well, I was just, uh, with what Ray was saying, so what about lines that currently are not on a right of way, like ours comes through the woods? Hmm. <laughs> So, so the power line or the hookup from the power lines to your house? Yeah, the power line comes over from, well, you're, yours on the road, right? Even though you're running around, but. Uh, so, yeah, we have power lines along more time. Yeah, so, right? so like, yeah, so basically, basically it goes up over the, the hillside there. Yep. And then comes out onto our property and then continues and goes to horns. Um, <clears> so there, there are, CV Fiber will be funding the, the full build out along the power grid. Okay. Um, the, the question around where people have to self fund is the hookup from the grid to their residence. Gotcha. Um, and so for that, that's underground for at my house. Mm -hmm. is, even though the power lines are above ground, um, the, the actual hookup from the power lines to my house is an underground run. And if it's an underground run, you have to do an underground drop to the fiber as well. You can't do an aerial and underground. You have to have it consistent. Okay. Um, and so if it's an aerial hookup, it's not very expensive. And, and we anticipate covering that for most people, unless it's an especially long distance. Um, mm -hmm. But if it's an underground, there's probably going to be some financial responsibility for the, the resident okay. or business. All right. Do you use courses like the Russian legend does? That would be me. <laughs> we should. <clears throat> All right. So we do states. Vermont and West Virginia. Yeah. So this is, let um, me read what, what I'm asking you to, uh, the board to commit to tonight. Um, as during the Warren meeting of uh, June 20th, the town, uh, Moortown Select Board committed $50,000 of its funds that has received or will receive through the American Rescue Plant. Um, to CV Fiber, uh, the Communications Union District, of which Moortown is a municipal member, for purposes of constructing a high speed fiber optic communications network that will be available to serve municipal, commercial, and private premises in the town of Moortown on, on the understanding that Moortown donation of $50,000 will be matched by a $50,000 grant from CV Fiber. That's technically from the Vermont Community Broadband Board. Vermont Community Broadband, Broadband Board. Um, and that the 100000 thereby approved will be spent in the town of Moortown to defray part of the cost of the fiber office to build out. Um, and more to come with the MOU as far as uh, getting a little more specific. Um, and the CB fiber will consult with the town of Moortown to determine how best to apply these funds within the town. Does the board have any questions on that? All right, so moves. Second. John seconds it. <clears throat> All in favor of um, the $50,000 uh, donation to uh, CB Fiber from the Arbor Funds? Aye. 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 All right. 
All right, Chuck. So here's our commitments. Um, we will work on the MOU. Um, excuse me. Sunday, right? Um, and we will move forward with it. But all right. There you go. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, two quick updates um, for you to know. Uh, since we last met, we also did secure a six million dollar construction grant from the state. Um, so that's going to help. We put together our final business plan and construction plan. Um, and we'll be uh, releasing some of those details over time, but it looks like the anticipated build out, unfortunately, is going to be a little later than we anticipated due to some labor and supply shortages that a lot of people are facing these days. So it looks like it'll probably be August of next year before Moortown gets the actual build out, um, and that's assuming things go well in, in acquiring supplies. Uh, we have already purchased 400 miles of fiber optic cable, um, and so we'll be using that for the first 400 miles of our build out, which will cover our first two regions. Um, and uh, uh, last but not least, we are conducting a webinar on Wednesday evening, um, where we'll have uh, more details of our planning processes, and we encourage anybody in the, in the communities to, to attend the webinar if you want to learn more. Thank you, Chuck. Any uh, questions for Chuck on CB5? And you know what, I've been a little. Um, That's going to be posted on front porch for one the end or another. Uh, it was posted I know, I last saw week. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. And we're also um, doing a press release, so it should go out in some of the local newspapers. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try to post it in front porch for again. Thanks, Chuck. Just to get the link. Yeah. All right, we have. Um, Mr. Wells and the story coming up next. Let me just check. Thank you. On, uh, thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Thank Let's see if anyone on the line had anything to really uh, uh, public comment. So, is anyone on line, anyone get on for public comments? Dave? Stefan? Denise? Anybody hear you? Not at this time, thanks. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right, if there are no hands up, we could go ahead and move on. Um, Tracy and George, what should you go for if you're here to hold it? No, you had a pad. Let me just pull it right here. That, um, a road permit that we used to pull in for a while as you wanted. Is that what you're getting to chat about? Mostly, yeah. Because we, we submitted that we had one which expired. Yeah. We submitted it over two months ago. Where we had Kingsbury kind of lined up to come work on it. And we're kind of just full of questions. So. Full of questions, is that? Yeah. All right, whatever. Yeah. Um, we want to know why we haven't gotten that permit. Um, if we're going to run into kind of this delay every year that we need to improve the road, because it's our understanding that it'll be our efforts and our money to work on that road. So we have completely planned our lives around improving this road, and now we can't get the permits to do so. So we're kind of frustrated that it's on us to improve it. We can't get the permits to do so. We want to do work to the road. We have these people lined up. We're not allowed to, and we're kind of just stuck in this. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did talk to Tracy last week. Yeah. And I explained the situation that the building permit that they received last year was issued in error. And that's why this was taking more time than it normally would because we were in the process of trying to get to the bottom of how to resolve. This error. Okay. Which, Despite yeah. our building permits, we should still be allowed to improve the road and grade it's not and shape it. Hey, wait, whoa, excuse me. Uh, Travis, 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 you, Travis, you, you are out of order. I have any chance to speak. That's all I'm out. I will give you a chance okay. as long as you're civil and you're good. Thank you. When someone's talking to me, don't want you to get your car from Thank you. So, pardon me. Great. So, when you speak up for that, 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 that is that was my feeling why the maintenance permit got held up because we wanted to get to the bottom of where we stood i think as a town and uh, i think we're i think we're there and i know it's john riley just came in as well so 
that John Riley is the head of our DRB board. So, uh, and I just want to say that some of it really is on us. We wanted to get out there because a lot of concern from other people on the yes. board. So we're trying to do more due diligence. Ray had a, a hip replacement. And we kept it over me, whether it's hard to name up, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I got sick, and I was supposed to be out there too. Um, so, unfortunately, some of that plays into it. We want to work with you. No, I don't anticipate this being an annual uh, okay. problem. Uh, yeah. We are, again, again, the house, forget the permit, it's there, it's there. Um, so we're going to work with you guys and work with other people on the road to make sure we can bring it up to, to codes. And really, what that's what we'd really like to have you do is bring it up to the code that is in the, um, the town plan. Okay. Um, Greg? I agree. Uh, I, you know, I don't necessarily feel that the whole road has to be 20 feet. Okay. And maybe, in my opinion, some room for uh, pull-offs or something like that. Uh, I think we're looking at 1,100 feet of road or something like this. Yeah. Or, or a trail. It, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, and I don't think it matters on the, uh, on the planning commission. But it's a road or trail. You still got to bring it up to 20 foot, according to our town plan. Or if somebody has a, another option. And I'm proposing that maybe uh, pull offs may be an option rather than improving the whole road. Um, yeah, I just know improving it to 20 feet would be, it would be tough. I just know that there's some wetland issues that. I don't know if we would have to go to the state. There's a amount of yeah. trees. Yes, that's a, that's a big concern. A large portion of yeah. that trail is in a buffer zone, so we would need state permits to do any sort of work on that side. If they went to the other side of the road, away from our property, I don't actually know if that's in buffer zone or wetland, but I know a, a lot of our property, property yeah. is wetlands. Yeah. You might uh, if I ask, you know, Martin, what, what's your uh, opinion? Martin, excuse me, Martin, when you pull up as well as you're involved? <clears throat> Uh, um, I have no no uh, issue with the proposed work. Um, so I, I mean, I signed off on it uh, once, um, and I, you know, under the impression that it was to help for traffic that was going to meet on the road, um, is what my impression was. So it was um, kind of a neighborhood decision, if you would, that it was what was wanted, um, and I certainly had no issues with. Um, putting some pullouts in to allow traffic to meet on that road. That was my feeling on it, at least. Uh, Travis, you, what, what did you want to say? Did you want to say now? Does it have anything to do with this? Does it have anything to do with this? Yes, it does. A better understanding of what the statute said to residents and the general public and VSA Title 19 301 definition trail means a public right of way that is not a highway and that previously was designated as a highway. On and on. Um, VSA Title 19 says classification of town highways. A trail should not be considered a highway and the town should not be responsible for any maintenance, including culverts and bridges. Uh, Title 19. 310. All right, so, so all right, well, hold on, what was it? Thank you for the they also bring out their town what, what's plan. What's the point? What's the, the point? Town, the town plan, you may be in some legal and putting the town, taxpayers, and people at great risk by upgrading this trip. But we're, we're not going to pay for it. I don't care if you pay for it or not, but the plan, the town plan, Policy B7 prohibits the extension in exist, uh, extent of town roads, the upgrade of class four roads and legal trails for year round vehicle use in the town takes over private roads except when such an act would be significant to or broad public benefit. Thank you, Travis. There's many, else? many more in the town, and if you you are really playing with the law on this, 
George, we can pull around. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can you see some speech me after or George, if you want to? I mean, I'll I was wondering what your main concern is with us fixing up our section of the road. Well, first of all, it's not a road. Or the trail. It's not a road. Right. So, so it, you know, it's, yeah. it does matter how it's worded because the statute very what? strictly describes how it's worded. I've been involved with a legal case for this town for the past 12 years. Do you have concern with us spending our own money to improve the travel? I have concerns with upgrading anything to do with this trail. It is recreational use, and you also would need a permit from A&R or DEC to be able to upgrade that legal trail possibly. No, no you don't. And the folks, thank you, Travis, for your your, your Jerome, Gore, Jerome Gore was asked by Tom Martin to visit up here. He has not done so yet. And he's planning on maybe the 27th, Mark, Martin? Possibly, yes. So, so I think uh, it is a class two wetland up there, so don't forget about it. Oh, yeah, we know. Right, Tom, George. Yeah. Ray, did you? And I'm, I'm, I'm just trying, I'm, I'm not mad at you at all, man. So I just want to go to George. I'm not mad. Okay, yeah, but I was just trying to, to get to the bottom of your concerns. But My concerns yeah. are with this town not abiding by the rules, regulations, and possibly costing the taxpayers more money because you want to live on a legal trip. All this should have been dealt with before you even began to build your full well, Travis, you were so concerned when you got the permit for the house, you should have put in. Um, the permit wasn't posted on a on a yes, it was. Road. Yes. It wasn't posted. Yes, it on was. Road. Sure. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Travis. You know, the first time that that Thank you, Travis. This year is not posted on a class three road. Thanks, Travis. We appreciate your. Uh, well, we'll you was getting more of it. Oh, I'm sure we will. Thank you. Right. Well, I'm just. Again, I'm reading from the Horn Town Town Plan. It says, our zoning regulations currently allow development on class four town roads or illegal trips, but it is discouraged in the development room or must approve the access. And then it goes on with further you know, comments of whether the town should repair class four roads or whatever. But, uh, so my interpretation is that with the, that work can be done on town trails. Just to improve confidence and not be in violation of the current town plan. That's that's what I look at. But the wetland issue is a, is a different issue, but I'm, I'm not talking about wetland issue. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, significant uh, too. But I don't know if we would be able if what in you had in mind with widening sections of it, if we could just widen it away from our property in certain sections, or just not have a pull off where the wetland is. Well, that brings up another point. I'm just, I don't mean to interrupt too much, but it brings up another point. You know, I'm just asking the town to do a survey of this trip. You know, uh, you know, their own survey, a survey of this trail, because we don't know what that center line actually is. Yeah. We really don't. And even Martin says it is shit all over the place sometimes. All, all, all roads are like that, Travis. Well, road center line data sheet, when you read the specs and the metadata on it, it very simply says that they don't shift more than a certain distance. So, right. you John, you're asking your own question. Then. I'm not sure what your point was. Well, the point is, even though that's the travel way, it may not be the travel way. Point in case, uh, Blodgett versus Town of Town. So, yeah, because quite frankly, in Blodgett versus Town of Town, Blodgett put a garage no, in not. a septic in the no, town right no, we did not. Yes, you there did. There was an existing building there back in 18 something. I even have pictures of it. No, right. we did not. Well, that's why we moved the trail for you, Travis. So no, you, the trail was eventually way past my property that you signed a certificate on for years. For no, years. It wasn't. Travis, I have the papers here, but that's I have a map right there. I can show you. Tracy, go ahead. Can we regroup? We, we would just like to hopefully get some answers on what we need to do on our end to this area of drive entrance to where we live. Um, we do have Kingsbury at the property right now. We'd like to get it taken care of. We'd like to get like access to our property, get all of our neighbors kind of on board and get everyone to agree on some sort of plan so we can move forward. No, I think that that is the way to work. And I think Martin has signed off uh, on the permit that we have. Okay. Ray has been up there. Yeah, uh, if I have not located where the pull-off should be, okay. but I would gladly, I don't know what your know, schedule is tomorrow morning, but if, you know, if you want to be over there early, I would make the trip over there to just 
give them, you know, we could agree on, okay, we need to pull offs, one, two, three. I've been willing to do that, and so we can get this moving. Yeah. If the rest of the site board agrees to that's the solution, I'm good with that. John, John, what do you think? I have a question. Denise? Hi, I have a question. Um, this is Denise McCarty. Um, so what does the current permit say? Is it different from the one that was submitted and expired? Um, because if there was a permit submitted, but now we're not sure uh, what the permit looks like as far as the design. I mean, aren't those details supposed to be um, put in the actual permit that gets approved, submitted and approved? We would need mm -hmm. another permit for the pull-offs. We need a permit for the pull-offs. I think what we should do is, is go ahead and approve Ray Martin going up, working with the wells to go up and figure out a plan. Yeah, I can kind of answer Denise's question on that and what I wrote down on that. And I know I talked to Happy about it, about just improving that drainage <laughs> underneath uh, Stefani's driveway, um, which a lot of water just comes over the road. So I know that was a big issue this spring. So we would hope to fix that and, and get water going underneath that culvert again. And, um, yeah. I think that would be a huge help yeah. um, in keeping the mud. Down. Now, um, there's another permit for that area uh, from the Baganos. Are you familiar He's with there that? They built the property next to us. Next to us. Yeah. So, Martin, you you walked with that as well on that. Correct. You pull? Yeah, yeah, so I can see you, Martin. <laughs> yes, I did. One um, well, after noon, I guess, or noon around noon, we met and walked out there. Um, it's a pretty extensive amount of work that he's uh, proposing to do um, to get out there, and that is uh, one of the reasons that I'd be meeting with uh, Jared Borg, the uh, stream alterations engineer from the state. Uh, it would require three culverts be installed, the last one being um, basically at the beaver ponds, and it's a significant amount of water, and I'm not comfortable making that declaration of what size uh, pipe should go in there. So that's why I've um, been speaking with Jaron, trying to set up an appointment. Right, so will the Wells Road or end of their trail, will that meet the Bergano's or is there any break in between there? There's a break between our driveway and the Bergano's, yes. A little bit, yeah. but again, that's on the other side, so we don't. Yeah. Um, I'm concerned from Denise, Denise's section as well, I mean, that's, one of the reasons why we wanted to get out there, and again, I hadn't been out there, the rest of the people that know what they're doing to mm -hmm. get there, um, that we don't leave her in desperate straits. <laughs> like, she sounded like she might have been here in the spring. Yeah, um, and again, it's our first experience with this road, so we didn't know what it was gonna look like this spring. Um, it was, yeah, it was- Hard packing it will go along. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was kind of less than learned on that front. We're it, trying to rectify it, yeah. And it sounds like you're all willing to work together and try to make this yes, work. Yes, I would hope so, yeah. So good neighbors. So. Yep. Um, and we know that they have graded it a couple times with their tractor, which you never know, really appreciate. Um, and we got a tractor this spring, still need to get a box scraper, but um, we would definitely be willing to help out. Um, and we're under the assumption that it is our responsibility too, so. All right. I, uh, well, I could maybe, but Travis, go ahead. Just two simple, simple, simple questions. Okay. Has there been a new permit filled out for this um, this access, or is this, we still working off the old permits? We have a new one, but he's working, again, I want those, uh, I want, I would like Ray and Martin as well with them to modify the permit and we'll, we'll, we can sign off. And if we have to have a special meeting in two days yeah. over Zoom, we can do that to make it happen. So you're not being held up another week or another two weeks, but I'll sign for it. We'll just, if you can, guys can put something on paper tomorrow that everyone can agree. And uh, maybe if Denise is out there, maybe you could walk it with them, Denise, in the morning. Uh, just so everyone's got an idea of what's going on and trying to work this out. And you got a house there, we're not moving the house, it's there. Um, 
you know, that's another thing. So let's just try to make this civil and work for, for all. Yeah. If that's... That's, yeah. Our goal city, yeah. you good with that? Yes, I'm good with that. Um, I mean, I, I'm just trying to, I'm requesting just transparency. What are, are the exact improvements that are being proposed? When will they be done? Time frame. Who will be doing them and who's signing off? I mean, do we have engineers or do we just have regular folks with wish lists of what we want these legal trails to be? And then after the improvements are done, is the, is the legal trail going to be upgraded to some other status? Because the more improvements that you make, uh, it deviates from the, def the legal definition under Title 19 um, of what a legal trail is. I don't anticipate upgrading the trail, but if in five years we have a 20 uh, foot wide uh, road with uh, the right specs, then we, we take a look at it. But let's, let's go for, you guys go for a walk tomorrow if you can meet them. Um, what time are you gonna be there, you guys? Uh, Ray? Seven, Mark, seven o'clock? Is that work for you folks? Yep. Right at Tracy. Well, uh, I'm, uh, Denise, can you make seven tomorrow? Sure. All right, so you're good. You're all good. And then, so the idea is you'll put uh, a working plan together um, and we will uh, sign off on that. So Ray, uh, I don't know if you know I'm on the butter. Uh, I'll meet down there at seven to meet you. That's Dave Stapleton. Okay. Dave is on the, um, the planning commission as well, so maybe he can have some insights and help. Okay. Help there too. Well, is I I do have a question, Dave. Are you participating as a land abutter, or are you participating as a, a planning commission uh, chair? Which so that would uh, be perceived kind of as a conflict of interest. Yeah, yeah, I've talked to Tom about that. So uh, I, I'm mostly trying to learn. I it, I don't have a lot of interest in the road, so I'm trying to learn. I think you know we need to work on policy in general for class four roads, and so this is a learning experience for me mostly. Well, it's a legal trail, which is different yeah. than a class four. Yeah, road, yes, so. yes, I've learned that too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Thank you. Travis, you're welcome to meet them up there at seven as well. Thanks. All right, um, so we all good? Um, I did have another request. We did watch the meeting from two weeks ago and I, we heard that you were starting some sort of committee for cross borders or trails. Um, would it be possible for us to be a part of that so we don't, I feel like the last couple of weeks we've been really out of the loop and things have kind of been going on in the background and we're not really sure but, what's going on. Yeah, well, we, Talk. We want to do something just like Dave. You just heard he. You know, we need to do something. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be a little. Let me figure out how we, we put that together and what we call it. Uh, we will, right now we have a lot of regulations, uh, things on the books that we just don't enforce. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't even we don't know they're there or we don't have anyone enforcing them. Um, you know, you're wrong. So. We're going to, you know, try to figure that type of stuff out. But when we do put something or start to work on uh, trail and road policy, we'd be happy to, anyone that wants to get on the committee, we'd be happy to have you on. And anyone, anyone on the computer tonight, Travis, you're welcome. John, Riley, you'd be welcome. Um, anyone welcomes to a committee here. Um, is that fair? I just want, I don't know if everybody knows this. About, when we talked about the committee the last night, after I gave it some thought the next day, I Something. really thought that it wasn't really necessary to have okay. any at that time, that <clears throat> it's better. We have the DRD, the Planning Commission, and the Select Board that we could resolve these issues. Uh, I'm not against the committee, but I don't want to be on the committee. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Ray. Ray. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, Ray, Ray and I talked a little bit about it. I mean, we didn't want to go committee crazy, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And committees have to be treated the same way. It's, it's an open meeting. 
uh, any committee meeting. So, you know, it can get very cumbersome. All right. Well, my only comment would be after, you know, listening in the last couple of weeks of this is it certainly illustrates that going forward, you know, in the next few years, this is only the beginning of what's the, the development pressures that are going to come into the town on class four roads and trails. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, all, if it's, you know, development review board or planning board or whatever, however we, or maybe the three board, the select board come together for a brainstorming session and then we go from there. But this is only going to just continue to, to happen. Yeah, and that's why we have, uh, we right. invited John in. We'll yeah. talk about that real briefly uh, yeah. and then move on. But okay. um, let's first make sure that everyone is set with, and I know we still have the other um, road permit for the Braganos, uh, and we will get to that a little later on in the agenda in the uh, uh, the course communications, a little after seven. Um, but are you folks good? I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tracy, yeah. Exactly. Uh, Denise, you all good with tomorrow? Yes. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Martin and Ray, thank you very much. So, Martin, I'll be trying to pull off, and then I'll just lie down with you because okay. there's going to be a bunch of cars. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hey, folks. Uh, Denise wants to speak. Go ahead, Denise. Sorry, I do feel that the process is a little disjointed because if I didn't live here, um, then I wouldn't be notified of this conversation, this process going on. Um, and out of respect for the other landowners that are around me that access the same road, I feel like you know they should have equal opportunity. And I've been advocating for that as well during this whole process is there's not clear communication, there's not consistent communication. Um, and, you know, so part of me is saying that, you know, Clement Stefani, who also owns land and has a road or a driveway off of the legal trail, um, you know, maybe he should be notified too that this is happening. Um, that is just something to consider now and going forward. Yeah. And as we're discussing changes to legal trails and class four roads, that there needs to be proper notification or some kind of um, consistent process to notify landowners that will be impacted for changes on legal trails or class four roads. Well, I, I think that's in place. If, if he had gone to the DRB, there would have been a notice out to the landowners. Right. On the building permit. No, that's something uh, we can certainly work on, Denise, and maybe even with road permits, uh, there's some kind of mechanism that it, it triggers with people around the road or within a certain distance, they get something. But maybe as we move forward with uh, uh, these discussions, we put that together, that, that is something that we can uh, certainly keep in thought. Thank you. I would, I would appreciate that. You're welcome. And I think everybody else would. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you guys taking the time to come tonight. Um, John, you have, thank you. You want to pull up, John? Sure. Put gloves on and... Uh, Thanks, John. How you been? Good. Having a good summer? Uh, so far, so good. Good. Well, thank you for coming. In. You were coming initially to talk about, um, Ray had originally reached out about the, the house permit that was on the, the trail. And so you made it very clear if it wasn't appealed at that point, there's really um, nothing as far as the roads that we could do. So that's, um, that's it is what it is, right? Um, so, uh, you've heard that discussion. So, why I thought we had you here, and we had Dave, Dave Stapleton uh, from the Planning Commission, is maybe we could uh, discuss how we can make sure that these type of things don't happen again, or, or what we should do as far as, 
even what Donnie said as far as this is going to be a, something, you know, a big problem, or maybe not a problem, but a big issue in the future as far as development on trails in class four roads. Yeah, certainly people are buying properties that the only access is the legal trail or a class four road. So um, it was interesting to me because um, the DRB heard, we did a sketch plan review for Michael McCarty, uh, January of 2021. And um, the parcel he owns, which I think you own the five acre parcel. We you bought the whole thing. The 30 you, oh, you bought that 30 acres. Yeah, we know that he was trying to subdivide it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the discussion at that time, he came in with yeah. an engineer and basically, do you own that house that on the five point off? That's all Somebody else owns that. Somebody else bought that one. Okay. Okay. Well, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, it was our understanding based on that presentation that it's basically about that house is where the road transitions from class three. Yes. And I guess the discussion is it's not class four, it's a legal trail, and that's pretty well understood. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, I think you're gonna see more of this. And, you know, we have the ordinance, the zoning ordinance, and we have the town plan. Um, you know, basically the zoning ordinance says, you know, primarily we look at it to make sure there's legal access. And um, when it's by a private driveway or a private way or a class four road, um, or a legal trail, you know, we typically, our concern as a DRB is safety and access for emergency vehicles. So typically we would condition any approval on a commitment that you'll upgrade the road with turnouts or width sufficient that um, uh, fire trucks can get there. Okay. And, and they can plow in the winter if you're gonna build a house. But we've seen a bunch of those applications over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's not much other guidance in the ordinance. So um, it's really the select board, I think, that has authority over work within, within legal trails and class four roads and even class three roads. And you permit that. And it's, you know, I think you need a policy if you don't want, it, if the town has a, you know, um, doesn't want these parcels to be developed with year-round residences, ultimately, you know, you control that by what's allowed to be done. <clears throat> and, you know, if you, you did get a permit before you bought the parcel to... Yeah, that was a, an agreement we made with the town. Yeah. Uh, or with the original buyer <coughs> that we wouldn't... It was contingent. Yeah. It was okay. contingent that we would need a building permit before we bought the property. So that's why that permit was in. Hey, he like received a building permit. Yeah. yeah, but that's why it was in his name, not ours, for the first one. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did have a question though. If the concern is just access of emergency vehicles and the road is wide enough for a fire truck, do we necessarily need those spots where we can fit two cars? If there is a turnaround on the road. Fire truck there? needs more than like just a truck to get down there. Sometimes pumper trucks have to get through things like that. I mean, Stefan might be able to speak on that here. Yeah, I would love to hear Stefan come on. Yeah. Well, and part of it's the judgment of the select board. But, okay. You know, certainly there's, as I understood it, Denise McCarty's residence is kind of on the other side of the parcel you bought. And yes. Further down the road. Up the hill. Yeah. yeah. And then that there's a couple of camps even further down before mm -hmm. yeah. Beaver Pond. So, you know, there could be vehicles meeting and, you know, how many vehicles and yeah, I, mean, I think there was an incident in the past week, Denise shared with us that, George, I think she maybe met you and you backed down and then ended up back into it. Yeah, I did back in. <laughs> I, was on the, I was on the class three section of the road when I did back into that tree. It's a recurring thing. Right. <laughs> right, it was on the class three section of the road, but Again, there was no place to pull off and the road was not wide enough for two, two cars to pass or anybody in that section to be able to safely pull over and let somebody go by. Um, so one of us had to back up um, and- Sounds like it should have been you, Denise. And there was an accident. I'm not good at backing up and I, had <laughs> way long, and I had way longer to go. So, so, so that's, a, that's a good illustration of 
maybe answering your question um, oh. that yes, we would love to, see, or I would like to see in that permit that you guys come up with tomorrow some pull offs. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot, but so there are opportunities if, okay. if yeah. you need Denise or whoever or yeah. wherever. Yeah. There are some of those things as if the DRB, you know, that's to use as a model. As John said, they're looking for safety, and mm -hmm. safety just doesn't mean one fire truck. It might be so that'll support. need to go the entire length of our property up to Denise's as well, just in case there are emergency vehicles up there as well. No, it's only, a, only I think it's only up to your property. Yeah, just up to yours. So she's grandfathered in everything that's built before now is doesn't need those turnoffs. There are cars that drive completely through from Morktown that go over as well. We saw a Jeep drive there yesterday. Well, they so they, they do. They can. Yeah, there was a Jeep that came up to my house because they thought that it connected to Stevens Brook Road. And it used to, through the legal trail that goes through the Bergana's um, uh, land, but because of the swamp, the beaver pond and the wetlands, it no longer connects over to Stevens Brook. But yes, they did try to come up and out past my house uh, looking for a road. And I let them know that they we're in the wrong a guy, a guy last weekend with the Subaru Forester actually went. I saw I went Person. by. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. He's from um, Wakefield, Subaru yeah. Forester. Yeah. Yeah. Some older gentleman. And so I know someone that actually kind of helped him get through. And I like, tore up his car pretty well. Yeah, and, yeah I thought he was um, joking at first when he said he. So I mean, I people do do it. I've just made a bicycle it. through there, and it's gnarly on. No, the they said it was not going on one side. When you get past the beaver plant side, going down towards you know more yeah. town and water. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 the yeah. other way. Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. It's I had to get off my bike and make up this spots. It's brutal through there. I can't believe anybody can drive through there. It's amazing. There is another point to be made. It's not just for emergency vehicles. It's now that people live down these. Ex you know, it's areas where it's hard to get to. Now they expect services like CD fiber possibly to plowing or maintaining their ways. Um, plus those properties are a lot cheaper because previous people have realized that uh, you can't develop it, you know, not without extensive work to be done. So, I mean, those properties are selling for a lot cheaper price than what regular residents within the taxpayers on class three or greater roads live. So, you know, I, I think it's rude to think that uh, it's okay to build out there and live out there 365 days a year. I think we've paid our fair share. It's not a matter of paying. All right, let's okay. John, okay. Travis, thank you again. That was not much tonight. So, point. so John, um, so really the select board then really it's on us to come up with uh, how we want to protect, if you will, those trails or class four. Well, I think that's one, you know, because you oversee work on those roads and have that authority, uh, you have a lot of say. I mean, certainly the Planning Commission can craft zoning regulations that would be more restrictive. And, um, you know, if the town adopts a more restrictive and just says, you know, you can't develop a primary residence, on a class four road or a legal trail, um, I think they probably, you know, the town would have to read that would be. Right, but I don't know, as a board, I don't think that's anything that we're interested in doing. No, uh, I'm not. I'm yeah, right, but we, we have that ability. Yeah, I mean, some towns may choose to do that. Right. Uh, but also, I mean, we need housing, we need, uh, these are historic roads that were there, and uh, there's yeah, those competing visions of. You know, do you have a preserve? Oh, this is yeah. in a preserve district where, you know, minimum lot sizes are larger and uh, setbacks are greater. And um, yeah, I mean, that's those are the dynamics. All right. So we, as a select board, we should probably get together with the planning commission, and and we probably will need a committee to figure out um, how to move forward with with or without. Um, development on trails and, and uh, that's where roads. There's plenty of cases on this also. Dave, go ahead. Yeah, I have 
started to investigate a bit on what other towns have been doing. And I do know that some have been more restrictive than we've been about building on class four roads. And you know, to my mind, it's a big, we really need to have a clear policy because the people that own the property out there, it affects the value of their property. And, you know, if they're trying to sell it to somebody and it's unclear with whether the select board's uh, going to be willing to let them build, use the driveway, uh, that's a, you know, that, that, that really has an effect on potential transactions. And I, I just think having a much clearer policy, whatever it is, would be pretty helpful to people. Well, I certainly, uh, conversations that we've had tonight illustrate that, that we need uh, something going forward. Uh, but we'll certainly <clears throat> look for the DRB to be involved in that. Uh, or yeah, that. absolutely. Uh, as well, John. Uh, okay. Yeah. Or we'd like it. I mean, because you guys see the permits, so you, I mean, you know the questions that are coming in, and, and some of the questions that we should be asking. Uh, I'm happy to be Yeah. Yeah. I say at the start, it's like board planning commission and DRB, and you know, just let it go from there. All right. So we'll put something together, and so there certainly should be some citizen involvement as well at some point. At some point. No. Um, and, and what? So, so we could, if we do bring those three groups together, maybe, maybe we could just put like a little packet of bullets together that would highlight some of the things that are given right now, you know? I mean, I'm not talking about a huge document, but just some simple definitions so that people come to the meeting with like, oh, okay, well. Right, we need to know where we're at. Yeah, sure. yeah you know, let's, 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 what's what we have, you know? Right. Establish that bar and then work off that. I mean, yeah, again, exactly. I don't think any of us, to, uh, you know, rule off what we what we can, what you can. Yeah, I know. Um, there's a learning curve there. You know, I've certainly for myself. That's for sure. So uh, certainly this summer, uh, July is in August is fairly busy, but I think towards the end of August or September, this is something that uh, we should jump on as boards and. Um, we can see how that works out to start with and then maybe make a plan when we want to present something maybe at a uh, town meeting and we can work back from them to figure out how we need to accomplish that. Is that fair with everyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you uh, again, everyone, for your comments. And uh, being civil and the people on the computer as well. Quick question for John. Are you the acting zoning administrator currently in Quiet I'm not. I've been told you are. I'm not acting zoning administrator. We've had a couple permits. We've asked, yeah. we've asked John if he could look at them. Yeah. And two building permits. But I think that's a good question. One of the things I wanted to mention to the board tonight um, Sasha did send me some of the applications that have come in. And my understanding is Claire Rock is transitioning out and is basically willing to come back and the board has um, agreed to hire a new person beginning July 11. That's correct. We have uh, Karen Sauter. Yes. Is that how we but, but my concern really is the interim right. um, because there's no one appointed that can act on the permits, the applications that have come in. And I think from what Sasha sent me, there's maybe four that are pending, submitted, received by the town. And that starts the 30-day clock for the town to either, you know, approve them or say they're incomplete because there's basic information that hasn't been provided or otherwise they're deemed approved. And so on the 30th day, it's a final permit. Right. Um, so, so the, I guess the, the reason we were sending those to you was for that reason to see if that's something that you, and we didn't know whether, I, I guess I didn't understand. I don't think I it. should really do that. I'm on the DRP. I mean, I'd be happy to, you know, and I would probably have to recuse myself if any of the right. matters eventually went to the DRP. But I think, you know, the board needs to appoint somebody as interim zoning administrator either one of the board members or one of the Sasha or Cheryl you know, obviously you need somebody who's right. willing to do that. But um, it, it's, I mean, there's four 
pending applications and the clock is running on all of them. And it's going to be really hard for a new person to come in July 11th who's brand new and be able to hit the ground running. So, um, Let's, um, Sasha, can we reach out to JB in the morning and see if you'd be willing to look at these five permits? Uh -huh. um, and then maybe we should, uh, does it make sense to suspend taking permits until a new person um, starts? I don't think you can do that. Actually, they haven't, they didn't wait still. They enacted a moratorium. A moratorium on uh, permits, but again, I think we're, getting close enough up against July 11th that... Uh, I mean, from what I can see, several of them are just routine permits. There are right, I looked at the first two that came in, they were just additions. In fact, that the reason I was gonna have you look at them is I was going to approve them. If you looked at them, you didn't see any um, yeah. issues with them. So maybe the board could appoint you as the... <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'd be happy to meet you here. Yeah. You're, and with Sasha and, and kind of go through them and think about them a little bit. I don't think it would take very long. Yeah, why don't, why don't we go ahead and then do that if, if the board is agreeable to that. Um, again, I looked at the first two that came out. I still have the house. I took copies of them. And they were just two, uh, and I haven't seen the two subsequent ones, but they were 20-foot um, additions or one was a, even smaller than that. Yeah, they meet setback requirements. They're kind of Everything was suited. They did a good job of the it has been paid and then, yeah. All right, so I'm well done. Is that? If you want to make a motion. Yeah, so I, yeah, I make a motion. That we appoint uh, Tom as uh, interim zoning administrator. Second. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Did you second that? I'll second Yeah, it. go for it. One of us. Then we'll have to run oh, oh. This is another comment. So just Claire is not available at all? Is, is, is no, she's she she out of the country right now. Oh. Yeah. No, I wish she was. Any, any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Put go ahead. Yeah, in my place. But is she still? <clears throat> was she, is she? Her term ended. Her term ended, but they have agreed subsequently to do the training. Yeah. For I was going to say maybe you should be assistant if she was still in place and might come back. Yeah, you know, but she'd be back soon. No. 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 Yeah. Okay. I guess. Just a thought. Thanks, John. Okay. All in favor say aye. No, I, I have a question. Okay, nice. Um, just quickly, at one of the other meetings that I attended, I made a suggestion that there should be like a secondary uh, review process before the zoning administrator signs off, whoever that would be. Um, has that process, has the select board thought more of that process? And has that process been in, implemented at all? And if not, when would that process be implemented? So the, if you uh, remember back, the first question that I asked John Riley, who's our DRB guy here, um, is how we can prevent um, permits moving forward in the, I guess, in the correct, uh, referring to um, George and Tracy's uh, permit that got issued and, and it was incorrect. So that was my initial um, ask is, and, and that's led to this discussion. But as we bring on the new administ uh, zoning administrator, I think it's something the board we can discuss. And, and um, again, we're hiring them and we're hiring someone that has the expertise. Um, this is, you know, Prior to this, we, we had uh, probably uh, the job had gone beyond the, the person's capabilities. Um, so I'm hoping that we don't, we don't have to check everyone's work, but maybe there is, and I'll speak with John or we can, as we move forward here, maybe there is a way to have a, a checks and balances on those things. I'll, I'll make, make one point on this, if you may. Um, so Karen, uh, who we hired and who will start July 11th, uh, actually has some background on quality assurance, quality review system. So I put to her during the interview process that maybe she could help us address this specific issue. And she's and I, happy to do that. Yeah. 
And I, I hear you both. Um, however, the previous zoning administrator also had um, impeccable references and job history as zoning administrators, not only in Moortown, but in um, other, uh, other towns. I think it was Duxbury and Warren or Waitsfield. Um, so, and, and then, you know, he made some errors from my understanding. So um, had there been some checks and balances with his work and not just operated on the premise that he knew what he was doing or had done something before. Well, look, Denise, that, that is just, pardon me, but that's just what kind of David just addressed. Um, he didn't say that she was the expert. He said she was good at quality assurance. So they were working to put some of those things in place. So let's, let's look to see what they come up with as far as uh, some of those safeguards, which may be someone okay. following up on her. We, so let's take a look and see what they, uh, they come up with. Okay, that's fair. Thank you, I appreciate you. you. I appreciate you considering that. Yeah, you're welcome. John, anything else you can guide us with? No, that's nice. Thank you. All right, really appreciate you coming down. Yeah, thank um, you. Um, thank you. you understand uh, sure. the issues. You know, we've got, well, not too bad, we're only 10 off, Don Wexler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A little town hall review is, yep. uh, just to get us all up to speed. So, um, you know, as a select board, you know, we're, as you can see, the last hour we spent a lot of time on just, you know, what it takes to run the town and stuff to, you know, to, to keep our town operating. But with the town hall, we now are at a sort of a crossroads um, of going forward, how we're going to go forward with the town hall and uh, you know, get ready for 2035 or something you know, and have the building be available for another 200 years after that. So I brought with me a couple of things. This is the gentleman that helped me uh, put together the RFP when he was doing some research on the town hall. He found an article that was written in uh, 2007 uh, in the Valley of Porter. Um, Oh, here it is. Yeah, in the Valley Report. Here's another one. And you'll see that, um, you know, I've just yellowed the drainage system was talked about at our Monday meeting on October 15th, of which we still have a little bit of an issue with the drainage system. And then if you flip the page, you'll see that um, out of the sky, Select Board Member John Wexler um, also brought up, you know, whether we should do a bunch of old projects there. And we did do some projects back in. Uh, 2007 and 2008. I thought you'd just kind of get a kick out of it because here we are 17 years later and we're kind of on the stand on the precipice of doing something new and bringing the building forward as a true community center. So, you know, during the past year, or back last year at Moorfest and then during the fall, we did a lot of community outreach. This was um, with the town hall committee which incidentally we haven't really met since uh, February 17th. There's, there's just been a couple of small, you know, I've been working on the RFP and a couple other people have been working on some stuff just remotely and stuff, so, which I'll get into next. So in any event, you know, there's been lots of programs. There's been rentals and just don't take starting again with halls being rental for the different events. And so now we have this RFP out, which, um, was sent out, I reached out to seven architectural firms. And so far, I've actually got, I would say, maybe two and a half that are responding. So I wanted everybody to have a copy of this, so when you have a chance, you can look at it. I've also yellowed out a couple of items on there, some key dates um, that are coming at us to try to have something ready by town meeting for the community to, to review and to potentially vote on. So like I said, we've got um, two architectural firms right now and possibly a third that are, I've walked one firm through and hopefully this week I'll have another one. But you know, I have to say, as you all know, everybody's totally, totally crazy and busy. So it's hard to really find folks. So 
Hopefully, if we can carry on, as you'll see, there'll be some possibly some interviews by the end of July, and then you know there's some re you know once we find a firm that's going to put this package together, you know they'll be submitting prices to do with the scope of work that you'll see in here. Um, so one thing we need to think about is that where we're going to come up with some funds to pay for the schematic and you know to get bring this team on board to identify the work we're going to do, take all the community input we've had as far as the life safety items and the ADA and, and how we might fix up the basement and such. So um, I wanted to get that out there because we need to start getting uh, gearing up for that and getting underway to how we might you get a, uh, a grant from like the Preservation Trust or Research and Grants because uh, this, this uh, higher How much are you thinking? Uh, I think the, I was just going to tell you that it would be somewhere between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars, I imagine. So, um, not imagine that's what what I'm hearing or or seeing, or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I mean it's underway and. Uh, so what would that, and I know I mean, what, would I, what, would I, what would I, what would I be looking at? If I well, well they, the, the firm that gets selected will then go about putting together like three schematic designs, you know, have a package of, they'll get input from the board, from the town hall committee, you know, maybe, you know, some other, you know, uh, yeah. people in the community, they will be, have already, they'll review everything we've done to date. The stuff we did with Bill Gallup, as far as some of the life safety stuff he identified, and you know, they'll get a site engineer to evaluate the exterior and how we would accomplish that. And you know, they'll present us with a. As we go through that thing, we'll pick different, you know, different apples and bananas, so that the final package is together, and then that's a package that can be priced up to, you know, hopefully that we would have a number that we could say to a town meeting, this is how much it's going to cost to renovate the town hall. All right, so 20 grand I can have uh, done. You're going to have a package that contractors will, once we all go through the process and select, this is what we yeah. want. You know, maybe we're going to just select, just do the ADA stuff and don't do a draft lobby and don't, you know, right. I don't know, don't fix the kitchen. Exactly, you know, but we'll, at you know, that point we'll know and we can present it to people in the town. Right, and we'll also, we've identified, uh, you know, as we all know, there's a lot of grants out there, a lot of grant money out there, so, you know, obviously we'd be sure. pursuing that. You know, I don't think we need to look at aqua. I mean, aqua money would be great to use for some of the town hall too, but there's a lot of other demands, and I think we have other ways to probably fund it. So that's the story on that, that's going on, but you know, how do you think we should go ahead uh, to find these funds to, once we get these prices and we say, oh yeah, we want to go with firm A, you know, or firm B or whatever, you know, uh, and then we want to engage them and kind of keep this schedule going. So you're you asking know, us how, how, how we're going to, you know, we're going to need the funds. You know, it's not going to be like do that day when once we select a person, but you know, certainly as this, we move into fall and they produce all these documents and stuff, you know. And, uh, and that's the fifteen to twenty thousand. Yeah, that's right. what I believe. And, it's, and then, yeah. didn't you say that you were looking into um, grants for that or no? No, I mean we've we've listed. Yes, we have some. We know of some grants, but we haven't started going after them yet. But that's now the next step. We agree that that's what we should do. And, you know, get. You know, we've identified some, but we haven't reached out. I assume I would want to would work with Cheryl Lynn on that right. or something. Yeah, no, I think that's mm -hmm. absolutely good. If, if you identify those, work with Cheryl and find out what she needs. And, and, and then maybe uh, she might know some as well, you know. You know. Yeah, no, I, okay. I fully agree. So I would okay. push forward to try to okay. find that 20,000 so that you yeah. can have it. Okay. Yeah, no, that's um, we might have to take it out of the service budget. Um, and one last item is that we've also uh, been working on, you know, going forward a management plan. Because as time goes on, you know, we're going to need it as more events are happening at the at the town hall with the library and not the library. And, you know, as you know, as we've stated, like just this year. There's been um, 
1,200 people have been, have, uh, been in attendance to programs, and there's been 840 library visits or something. So, you know, the place is definitely being used. So, um, the town hall committee, the book library trustees, the friends of the libraries, uh, uh, Cheryl and Sasha have all, you know, looked at this. This is a rough draft of, of how we could go forward with a management plan to manage the building. And so I'm giving you all a copy of this to, to please read. When it's, it's no sense in trying to talk about it right now, but to read it, read it, and so that maybe at the next meeting we could, you know, go over it, or even ask some of the other players to come to the meeting, and um, you know. Yeah, no, I think it's a good. Um yeah, because I'd like to take a look at yeah, it. certainly, you know, the the rent, you know, the this, this rentals are gone, going, and happening. You know, maybe there has to be a little system where maybe it could, you know, uh, be a better communication system with it, or you know, there could be a, a town hall manager who would organize all the different all the different events, uh, and then of course the town town clerk would be responsible for the final thing about the payment and insurance and all that. But in any event, if you read the document. Um, that would be great. So, and if we could get it on the on the radar to discuss uh, in the future. And one last item is the front door. <laughs> We've certainly been struggling along with the front door because maybe it's getting the doorknobs being turned so much that the doorknob is just not live, happening. We've had several repairs, including yours truly, which really didn't work. Um, so. It is something identified in the future, whenever that, you know, it's, we all know it's a ways out before we do this project, but um, that that is a sort of a, a life safety issue because having a doorknob on an exit door is, is a little nice. It's nice to have. Yeah. Well, any of it, it's not only up, so we could, we have, we have a gentleman, a young man who's helped us with the back basement door is now fixed and we're going to fix the side door. Which you can having a little trouble and it's rotted at the bottom. So we um, could fix the front door with either a brass, you know, push bar, you know, so it would be, you know, somewhat period if you want to call it. Or we could get, um, and then on the outside would be a lever handle, or we could just have two lever handles, you know, and one's 650 for the crash bar and it's 550 for the two lever handles. So my suggestion is, is I'll get some cut sheets so that people can look at them. But I think it's something that we should fix in soon. No, we need to fix that. Yeah, yeah. there are yeah. too yeah. many emails. That come yeah, through. yeah, I'm sure. I think it's like I see a lot of emails. I know. Is this another door knob? Yeah, so, okay. uh, right. So I, I, I want yeah, to, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. And I just wanted to give you that update, because, you know. As far as I'm concerned, I don't need to cut you. If you can Fig figure it out. Think the best yeah. one and do yeah. it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Either one of those is, is fine. I agree. Okay, good. I just wanted to give you that update. And my last question, okay, is could someone help me figure out where the septic and the well is? Does anybody, I mean, we have a really old drawing. Yeah, the well is right out front, right? Yeah, right there in the yeah. corner, right? Yeah. But where is the septic system? And you know, what do we know right about it? Right in the back. Right in the back, yeah. Right, right in that where little the tank is? Yeah, where the That's tank not is. what this, I'll send you this thing that I have a copy of, I think, what Cheryl Lynn sent me. Yeah. I don't know, it's like in the corner by the sawmill or something, across the other house across the street used no. to use it, or, no? No, well, the, no, the, other, the, the house across the street does use it. I know that's... Yeah, the, okay. But it's behind so where the gas tank is. Yes. Hmm, that's interesting. So, do you that, know anything about the size of it or the size of the tank? Yeah, or anything what, what the system is? Do we even know what it is? I know we had it pump, we, we had to have it pumped or something. Oh wow, I don't even remember the last one. I don't know who pumped it because they would know anything about it. Hmm. Uh, and and you were involved with the hazardous waste assessment. Was that done or is that ever done? I don't recall any hazardous waste assessment, no. Well, I don't know if that has one ever been done. I, I, they must have been. I think I've read on it, but Cheryl or Cheryl should know. Okay. okay. Oh, Cheryl, Cheryl would know. know. Yeah, okay. I okay. mean, I, I, sorry, are you talking about soils or are you talking about lead? 
No, I was, I don't know, not soils, no, just in the building. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. so there was, there was an assessment on, on the, uh, a lead assessment. Yeah, good, okay. There is a report somewhere. All right, well, I'll, yeah. I'll track it down. Great, thank you. So, just a question, on, you know, there are two issues with that, with the town hall, and that's the septic and the parking, that are gonna limit whatever we do, you know, whatever, Whatever we want to build there or enhance it to make it more attractive, we're always going to have no parking and a very limited septic system. Well, we've outlined, as you'll read in the management plan, about parking and how people have to, if they have an event, they have to park at the school, you know, to park up here. Up here. So. so that's outlined, you know, for any renters. And I agree, it's definitely an issue. With the, that's why I'd like to know a little bit more about the septic, for sure. Yeah, it, you know, and the water. And the water. Well. Yeah. The state would have records on the well. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, forget about that. And I said, build a new town hall with all those things. <laughs> Add on to this thing here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, well, it's a work in progress, so we'll thank you for that point, Ray, and we'll check that out soon. So everyone has that homework that Don has for you, right? Has what? The homework that you've yeah, got yeah. to read. There, there you go, home, you know. So nighttime reading. You can help yeah. fall asleep. Fairly free, <laughs> so it shouldn't be put bad. All right, so let's go ahead and move forward. Let's see what we have. Thank you, Don. So we have reports communication. Sasha, why don't we go ahead and start with you? I have reached out to Ron uh, regarding the wording for the warning on the animal ordinance, and he's working on that. Okay. Um, we are wondering if it's possible for the row of guys to maybe pressure wash the outside of this building. It hasn't been done ever. You know, the fire department? Is that what does the pressure washing martin typically? Or is that something you guys could do? We've never done the buildings. We, uh, what was it, three years ago, we, two years ago, we hired a contractor to do the town buildings. Um, hey, Stefan, are you on? Yes, I am. Is that something the fire department uh, can do? I didn't hear what it was. Uh, to uh, power wash the uh, the town office here? Uh, we certainly could. Um, it's kind of a hit or a miss. Uh, we have to obviously be careful because we can take paint and the building apart, but we can uh, we can certainly give it a try. We've done it at the uh, at the town hall before. It's it's somewhat successful, but we stay far away from like where the power comes in and such to prevent problems. But we certainly would be willing to to give it a go. And uh, John mentioned the town hall as well, and it sounded like you've been there before. Is that something you could put on your schedule too? Yes, we can. Uh, we can get that within the next few weeks here. And take care of it. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay. Right. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Sasha? Um, they lowered the speed limit over in that section on Route Two. I don't know if everybody saw the email. It's down to thirty-five now. And that's like the corner from Gallery Acres, right? Yeah, right yeah. from there, right yeah. to, this, to the red light, to the uh, traffic light. Very right, well, congratulations. I know you guys moved on that. The, uh, something that we talked about for quite some time, right? And it was all of a sudden it couldn't be done, and then all of a sudden it was done. Well, well it was, I mean, it was changed to 40, and then, and then um, Laura Gans had requested to change to 25. And 35 is the lowest thing to go. But I, I did go to the, to the hearing, uh, you know, it was a virtual hearing. And they have, I, I don't know if they need to be reminded, but they did talk about that because it is a very, um, it's basically going through a neighborhood, um, that they would, they could, to, to lower it anymore, they would consider further down the road, especially if we get with the sidewalk. Because then that would be a, a you know a further study because it literally have to take in all of group two you know 
for, from the 50 to 40 to, you know, to get that to 25. But in the meantime, they said, well, we're waiting to get the sidewalk built, but they would consider putting up some kind of sign, you know, like a, 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 a thickly settled or, you know, pedestrians ahead or something that would alert people to slow down even more, that they weren't just coming into a 35 or more. Like okay. this, you know? So they are considering that as well. And then, then we'll work on the rest of the route. So, I mean, it's, it's really so residential. And that section of the route, too, is in the middle of Sex Line. It really is. Yeah, there's quite a lot of people mm -hmm. living on that road. Is there any indication that anyone see when they're going to repay that? I don't know. I suppose they did do another section this year. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. I think that the contract's been awarded. So, I don't know. That's supposed to happen this year, yeah. Unfortunately, though, that'll, that'll make our argument that much harder. I was about. I have a question about that. So if you're making the effort to change the speed limit signs in various places, um, but we're not, you're not enforcing it with law enforcement, what, what is the point of, of making the effort just? Well, Denise, again, you've been on a few meetings. I think you've probably heard that um, the state police is, uh, informers this spring that they didn't get the hires that they thought they would. Um, there hasn't been a lack of we haven't wanted it or we haven't allocated the money. Um, but frankly, uh, there just haven't been people to do it. We recently received an email that now Washington County Sheriffs have recently hired someone um, and now we're looking for business. So you're going to have them in and see what, um, see what they can offer us. Okay. Yep. Sasha? That's all I have. All right. Um, so one of the things that we... Go ahead, John, I guess. Why don't we go ahead and deal with the reports? Okay. Um, I spoke with Frank Piazza. He'll do something about his head. He's got to prove his up a little bit more. The stop sign. Yeah, so block the stop sign. Are you guys having that issue again over there? Yes. When was he going to do that, John? <laughs> Why don't you yeah. give him a week? Yeah. If, you, if they're not done in a week, go cut what you need uh, yeah. that's in the right of way. Uh, very clear in the uh, Title 19 somewhere, I would read it today or sometime, that it, within our right of way, you can cut whatever you need to, um, especially once the tree warden says we can do that, uh, and he has uh, to make it visible. John, anything else? Okay. Uh, no, I guess you'll talk about the other stuff. Sure. Uh, Don? I don't know if that is that now, I guess, reports and communication. Yeah. Sure. So, um, <clears throat> well, we gave you the Route 2 thing. So based on what you remember, you, uh, a week, a couple weeks ago, we you sent out that thing that showed us how the state had changed some statutes. Yes. So, which now, from my reading, it, it sounds like we can now, if we wanted, we could slow the speed down on dirt, uh, dirt roads, not on a state road, but on dirt roads. We can now, you know, right. But in any event. From talking to different traffic people, speed signs really are what really totally slow people down, anyways. But you know, some one gentleman, John Captain, that I've talked to, who's the head of uh, one of my trans, was that sometimes communities that they put slow down signs with different types, like the kind we got for Pony Farm Road. Um, I think we still have some left, Sasha Joy. You still have some left? We got 10 of them. I think I only put up four, but somewhere they're stashed. But, you know, so I was thinking maybe we have six of those. We could put those up, you know, in some different roads in town because we have had a lot of complaints about speeding. And those are the ones, you know, slow down and drive like your, you know, your kids lived here. So that's just an idea that's with a, an idea to flow. Um, I have to just, uh, tell you one sign that I did find at a friend's neighborhood in New Hampshire the other day, and then we will move on just, you know, so you can 
get an idea of how this could go, really, you know. Um, and that is, um, this is great. All in favor of slower speeds, raise your right foot. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you can put that on River Road or John you know, the Mountain. Well, but these people want you to actually leave that on. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Right. Okay, so. A little bit smaller than that, a little bit quicker. All right, so then on to a more concrete item. On uh, Thursday morning, uh, we're going to meet John Kaplan again from uh, V Trans here in town to talk about uh, the uh, RSF sign, which is the radar speed uh, sign here, and whether we can relocate it down near Silka Lane. Silka. Silka. Silka? Silka. Silka Lane. So they are coming into town. That would slow people down. And also, just to look at the current state of crosswalks, what we can do while we we're a couple of years away from the sidewalk, but you know, there is one that was painted temporarily down here yeah. and that be repainted. And something to slow the traffic as they come around the corner with the sawmill, the town hall, and the uh, Moytown General Store. So that's Thursday at nine. Yeah, and it, it looks like in terms of a uh, time frame, the sewer, the sooner the sewer would be next summer, right? The sooner with what? The sewer. If the we, sooner the sore. The, the soonest we would have the sewer would be next summer, right? Oh, at least. At least. At least. Yeah. You see, then, so we're looking at the sidewalk being a year after that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we just can't, especially with the town hall and everything, we can't have people <laughs> crossing the road without a crosswalk. Not and, and we, and we, we've got to figure out some way to to do it, you know, even if we have to put a section of sidewalk, you know, where it is. You know? Well, I think this guy, uh, John, should be able to kind of uh, give you some direction on yeah. that. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm psyched that he, you know, agreed to come to town. Good. So, yeah, that's, uh, that was... Pretty... You know, another thing on that with those blinking signs, I know Sasha's, the, has done some research on those mobile units. Yeah, the buy and the array. Um, yeah, they're looking on that. So there's an array of what we're going to see information. So I think in a future meeting, that's something um, that we can discuss mm -hmm. as well. Um, depending on you know what we find out with, with, the, with the sheriffs in there, it sounds like they had a limited availability. Maybe we use some of that money if we don't think we spend it all there towards one of these sites. Or our funds too, right? Or our funds we do as well. Thank you, yes. And now, in terms of traffic calming, um, Don and I also read that to mean speed bumps. Yeah, you'll never get one out of here. I'm not going around here. I'm going around the dirt roads. Oh, All right, on our town roads. Just don't fix all Paul. I don't think that's going to work. I don't think we're going to get that. But, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Thought maybe out here in the parking lot, John, we can get your speed pump. We have one actually. We, we have, have one. <laughs> we have have some sometimes. Um, and um, yeah, and then the signs. Okay, so I guess I'll cover all that. What are you guys meeting? Thursday. Thursday at nine. Mm -hmm. right, so we have that down. I won't be there, but I'll just leave it. Danielle said. Uh, yeah, I guess, sure. No, I don't There's the Morfest, the Morfest committee, have they started meeting yet or anything? Yes, yeah, they've been having, um... A few meetings? I think so, but I don't know. I mean, I can check into that for you. No, no, I mean, who should I reach out to? Leanne? Uh, reach out to either Leanne or, um... Lindsay. 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 Lindsay Staples. Or Stefan is a good person, but probably one of those two would be better. Okay, great. Kelly, would you have, you have anything for us today? Nothing. Nothing no, no, no. Except it looks like somebody's living down in the pull off, right yeah. by the town yeah. line. I don't know if you can bring that up. <laughs> I was asking you to bring that up, actually. I noticed it. I, was, I drove by and I was like, oh, maybe someone just broke down and now it's been yeah, there a while. And today, today, there were several cars coming back up. 
uh, and actually out partially into the highway. So it's it's a dangerous situation. Uh, it's dangerous. It is against the law. Yes, and yeah, I was wondering it is the against rules. the law. I mean, you cannot can't in pull over. She just can't. It's a lot. Um, we should, Sasha, if you could reach out. It, it, obviously, the person that's doing that is living there because they don't have anywhere else to go, right? Yeah. So maybe with all the stuff that we give away in the state, find out if there's maybe um, assistance even to a campground so this guy could get um, his trailer in a campground that has facilities. I mean, that would, I mean, I think the state gives enough hotel rooms and stuff away. Maybe there's something. He appears to be a veteran. There's a Marines, Marines uh, sign he puts up on the side. Um, so maybe the Northfield. Um, what is that called? I don't know. It's Northfield Veterans. Vet Northfield Veterans or something is over there. Maybe there's. So if you mind reaching out to a couple of those and see if there's some assistance for this gentleman. But I agree, it needs, it's not safe. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, because I know there was someone who lived up on the Berlin half above us, and they lived in a bus, and they were trying to set up in the Montpelier Park and ride, and they were like. Yeah, uh, it's too bad, and I feel, but uh, unfortunately, it's, it's, as John mentioned, or Don, right, it's becoming a safety issue, and you really can't be, you have. Right, Uh is, Are we going to just tell Joe Glad we're going to go ahead with this morning repair work? Yeah, I think we've done that last fall, didn't we? Yeah, we, we, it's in our budget. Right. So, Sasha, would you mind just reach out to Joe and tell him that he can go ahead? Okay. Um, I did walk uh, that with Mike B over there on Cobb Hill. I did meet with him. And walk that. We'll talk about that later. But the, yep. I guess I did meet with them and, and did walk most of that road. Yeah, we're gonna um, because that's something we'll be signing off on right now. So, in fact, we can go ahead. Unless uh, you have anything else. No, that's it. And Martin, do you mind rolling up as well? So I we just wanted to. Um, I know they're on the line. Uh, Mike, you're on the line. Mike, check it out. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, good evening. Um, so we have your permit. I know Ray and uh, Martin both walked with you. Martin, can you can you sign off on this, or you have not signed off on the I have permit? been law on the new permit. Um, Sasha sent to me. I wasn't able to print it off on my computer. I was able to view it on my phone. Um, the only caveat I have is the um, final culvert, the third culvert at the Beaver Ponds being. Uh, Contingent on whatever the stream alteration engineer recommends. All right. Um, other than that, uh, I've had conversations. Uh, Denise, I've actually emailed with her briefly about it as well, just saying that you know I'm definitely um, have no issues with the project. It will be messy um, to begin with, um, but I don't have an issue with what is proposed. I haven't been notified in writing what the proposal is, um, which I thought that there needed to be some notification in writing to adjoining um, abutting landowners. This is not for work on the land. This is for just the road permit to these. It's not a building okay. permit. It's not a building permit. The road, the road permit on the legal trail? Yes. Yes. Okay. But does it, is that going to impact my ability to access my house? <laughs> no. No. So I, I have not seen a new permit, but there is going to be a lot of truck traffic for this work. And I, I can tell Mike at that time that he's going to have to maintain the, the whole uh, section. Uh, you know, to make sure Denise and, and Wells can get out uh, when they're doing work. So, and as far as from Wells' house to whether that's got the improvements, whether there's any turnout required there, I don't know. But uh, 
Uh, is there any other permit regarding the maintenance of the road while this uh, this is going on? And you know, I'll, you know, is it just part of the general conditions that when they're doing the road, they just can't they just can't fix the intersection trail. We're going to have I don't know how many loads of gravel going down that road, and that road's not made for that kind of traffic. Correct. I also yeah. let Mike know that okay. you would need to keep the um, trail from that he's not working on. He he has agreed to that, um, but I don't know what caveats we have in place to make sure that that's upheld. Other than one of us, you know, checking on it every few days, or you know, I mean, it's. And is it? And is there anything in writing that says that, or is it just? Word of mouth, honor system. Well, that's something that we can we can add as conditions to the permit at least. Okay, I would appreciate that. I mean, I basically again, I just want to know: Am I gonna? Am I going to have trouble getting to my house? Um, how am I going to safely get to my house? When does the pr project start? For how long? Um, you know. So that information doesn't appear to be very clear on a road permit or anything in writing that's submitted to the town. And I would think that the landowner, the landowners that use that main trail to access their properties as well should be informed. Now you've shared with that earlier, do you understand that? We just know from experience, it's working with contractors in the area, it's extremely hard to get something perfectly set in exactly. stone. Like, we were supposed to have Kingsbury starting in April on the road when we originally applied a long time ago, and they haven't gotten back to us until last week. It was kind of... And then they tell you that they're coming, and then days go by, you don't hear from them, and then they say we're coming tomorrow. Know, so it, it's, it's really, really challenging. No, I think this valley area is yeah. tough. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really hard. It's well known for... Yeah, if you ever built house before, you know. So, so we have given, at yeah. least on our end, we've given Denise like a day or two heads up when we know, and we've done the best that we can. So I'm sure Mike and Leo will give us the same courtesy, courtesy and we'll just yeah. try to work with each other because we usually get like a six hour notice and they're like, we'll be there at 7 a.m. and we're like scrambling. Yeah, my, my goal isn't to inhibit anyone's access to anyone's property. I mean, especially, you know, that's that's the whole reason why we're, we're trying to improve this is to access our own property. So the, the goal isn't to to do that. And if it does, we'll, you know, we'll obviously mitigate that as it comes, um, you know, so that, that and, and with the timeline piece, you know, again, sort of to the point that, that Jordan Tracy are making is, you know, we're trying to work on, um, you know, the, all the timelines that have been pressured around us and, and we're communicating as much as we possibly can. Um, when we see and receive information. Um, so we're, we're trying to go above and beyond to make sure that people are informed and communicated uh, and aware of our projects and, uh, and, and ensure that we're on the right page. So maybe tomorrow um, when you guys are out there, Ray and, and um, Martin, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we could update any conditions on the Pagano's permits that you guys feel. Um, and then when we get together in a couple days, I guess we're gonna <laughs> Zoom to approve everyone's permits. Um, Mike, we can do that with you. I know you're in Connecticut, so you won't be able to be there in the morning, but uh, both Ray and uh, Martin have walked the project with you or the road with it, the trail with you. So they, just so they can <laughs> collaborate themselves and say, all right, this is what we, want to see um, and taking into consideration uh, what we've heard as well. Um, go ahead, Denise. Sorry. Um, and since the trail improvements past my driveway also um, are in a wetlands preserve, um, doesn't there need to be a permit, a wetlands Preserve permit to to improve that part of the legal trail. And where is that? That's something I can check with. Uh, Jaron should be able to help me clarify that. Um, I mean, right now I can tell you that there's significant erosion happening on the legal trail because of the water that's 
running down the middle of the road. Uh, with the day that we were there, it was raining. Um, so it was an actual good time to see what was happening. Um, and there was a lot of water running down that road um, and doing some damage even when we were there. Um, theoretically, the proposed work should alleviate a fair amount of this erosion and sediment that's probably impacted in the waterways, but I can't answer that question as far as... Well, you can get an answer right. to that I question whether there's an investigation, yes. any kind of wellings permit there. Right. When I walked in, I did not see anything in the town right away that was a thing well, that happens. Right, correct. Right. Unless it's way up by the beaver pond. So you didn't walk all the way to the beaver pond. Yeah. The section I walked, the wetland was way outside down, of the line. Yes, down in the building. Yeah, because yeah, that's the main thing is we're really just upgrading the, the town's infrastructure and the right of way that's there and present for the last, you know, probably 150 years or so. Um, I will say that is something to keep in mind when we meet tomorrow. Um, we do have a copy of our delineation on our property, so we can look at where the, because the wetland does cross the road. And it's places where you can buffer zone. is, and in yeah. our town it's 75 feet. So we have yeah. wetlands that look, just look like grass, and we have to stay 75 feet from there. So, so we would have the same so. issue. And it's issue with our improvements. All right, well, good. Is this uh, for logging? Is what this is upgrading the... Uh, is it like logging? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So now you're going to upgrade a whole other section of the road with another permit, is what you're saying? Yes. Because I was under the assumption that it was for logging, and I'm just double checking. So, right. so you're not changing the, at the road, the not two inch road. road, or a state forest, anything no. like that. Just checking. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so you guys can just see if there are any other things um, um, like that you need to uh, add to permit. But again, I think. Um, Everything should be uh, fairly straightforward for you. What is the purpose of uh, maintaining this? This uh, I don't know, some property out there. It says it says. I don't know, let's get this property. Well, you can walk it, right? It does. Yeah, that's what they got to do on Google Trail Seventeen and walk it. Well, that's not <laughs> Google Trail Seventeen. I <laughs> it but. It actually is because it was town highway 49 back in 73 and our town was also 49 so it's a, still the same place all right thank you <laughs> i can show you that before so does right. it make does it make sense to consult with the wetlands you know that's what martin is going that's what they okay bef but before the permit yeah. gets approved well, so, Martin, if you want, during our survey, we went through with uh, the, the company that had a wetland specialist that uh, when we first initially went through this, we can we can link up and get you that documents we of what we already have with and uh, and, and see if that will assist in, in this venture. Okay. That would be a great point. That would, be good. That would work. But it, it is, you are doing logging. Isn't that what I read a while ago? Or is that oh, yeah, that's someone else who's going to do logging? I yeah, mean, yeah, right, right, right. Now that's the plan is to do some silver culture on the property and, and bring it back to a place where we can use it for our kids and family, and, and enjoy the the culture that you guys have built there. Very good. So you guys will do that. We'll get together uh, in a couple of days over Zoom. Um, awesome. And invite everyone. Is that all right? Does that work for you? It's fine with me. All right. And Mike, does that work for you? First mate, thank you guys. All right, thank you. Um, the other, we do have another curb cut. Doesn't look like there's anything. Um, Martin, you saw this, this is on Jonesbrook Road. Yes. Um, the only caveat I have there is I did meet with Jared Borg um, there because that is also another stream that I wasn't comfortable um, sizing and he's recommended a three foot minimum culvert. Um, so I just wrote it in on that permit. And that'll just be a stipulation of the curb cut. And so do you go back and um, will you go back and after that's done, inspect that? Yes, I will see. It. Okay. Yes, as it's done and make sure, yes. So, so that's, maybe, all, that's, all, sorry. that's all the class three rule. Correct. Not class four. Correct. 
But they uh, they pay for that folder, right? No, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So good. Yep, they do. Uh, okay, I think that's that. And I don't have anything uh, new to add, so let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to swap this around, do old business first. Um, nothing about our Bob League of Trails. We've had enough discussion tonight. Uh, the blinking lights we've heard about. Uh, Sasha, website. Chuck was getting you some questions to ask. Yes, he's working on some questions. All right, so I want to try to get that um, done if we could by uh, August so we can uh, award a contract there. In stormwater project, Ray, I wasn't here last time. Can you just give me a quick update on that? So I believe right now they're working on getting documents prepared so it can drop to bid when we're ready. So they hired a, uh, I believe they hired a, we, we were supposed to have a meeting after the last meeting and it got canceled because uh, the uh, regional planning commission manager uh, could not attend. So we have not had a meeting with the new engineer to get a timeline on when we can uh, have the final documents to get it out the bid, but I believe right now the plan would be to get the documents ready, get it out for bid for construction uh, in May next year. Okay. So the site visit, you said probably at the end of this month or early in July? Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Just so let's move on. Um, Doug? Yeah, as an old business I have the condensation of the town garage. I actually have, um, I found someone who maybe can help us, so I'm just giving an update. That That's good. I found someone, and maybe you could also show me. You said there's something 40 feet up in the air. Or yeah, the, the trim horns, which yeah. I haven't addressed yet. No, no, yeah. but I mean, maybe but, when I show this guy, yeah, that would be, yeah. Or we can borrow us on this 40 foot. <laughs> yeah. I did, when I talked to Joe, yeah. yeah. I did tell him, I told him to get in contact with you, but you know, okay. it's at the garage. Oh, that's okay. good too. Perfect. Well, this is a younger guy, so it might be better for that. Job. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a long way up. It is. Yeah. And and the other thing, could we just have one old business pending that will, you know, let's, this is, you know, another future thing, like it's almost like the town hall, but the town hall is happening now, but the future is now. But, you know, the whole sand pit town garage discussion that we have every once in a while, if we can just keep it on the radar screen that, you know, maybe this board or future boards will slowly but surely start to address, you know, relocating both, you know, at least the sand pit, if not the town, town garage. Uh, as Stefan has said, he'd love to relocate the fire department into the town garage and then we could use this building for something else. But, you know, there's always, you know, we do a lot of stuff every day, I understand that we got to keep the nuts and bolts yeah. going, but That's there's fair. nothing wrong with, that. you know, nothing wrong with yeah, thinking that. about it, you know? Especially when we put the storage system in or something, and, you know, the stormwater system, and I don't know, it's something to think uh, about. All I can say is when we went to build the town work, we had a nice site. I know we did, it, man. We, we didn't shut do it. Down, so I, I don't I know. know what else we can do. Well, I hear you, but hey. First, you don't to succeed, try, try again, right? All right, so yes, I will, uh, Sasha, you might have had some business, so we have a lot Thank you. Thank you. It's not sure. Thank you. Barton, what do you have um, for some? Um, I have a couple of items to, to go over. The, uh, so, nobody wants to talk about class four and the trails anymore, but <laughs> I have <laughs> hey, uh, can I have <laughs> phone call from um, someone named Riley that um, summers on Lynch Hill. Yeah. Um, he's called about uh, wanting to add a culvert to the uh, top of Lynch Hill. Currently there's um, three water bars I think that are basically do the job. Um, this location is near the top I've been told um, and he's looking to add a culvert. Um, so I just looking to get, you know, feedback from the board as to what they would like me to tell them, whether we're, you know, 
So I see you shaking your head. Why? Why? Because there are enough. I feel like I mean, going no, up that road right. all the time. I don't know anything about the road. There's enough water bars coming down that hill. There was all the grant work on that hill, and uh, where would you put it? Yeah. And there was a culvert up there that had to get torn out because it sunk in at one point in time. I mean, the amount of distance he comes down, he's literally across from Dave Van Dusen's camp. Right top. across. So he's right at the very top. And for summer, I mean, the amount of rain that comes down that hill, I think it's fine. We did a lot of work on that hill, chill, and it's really holding up. Yeah. Every time we put a collar up there, within a few years, it's either collapsed or it's, mm -hmm. it's plugged. So. Uh, and since it's only summers, I mean, the only time that that section of road is really dangerous is in the winter. I mean, the main piece you would come down is a sheet of ice from February to April. It's just summer. I don't. I don't see it making sense. I'm fairly neutral. I think you would have a hard time getting, of course, we have a standard of eight, a minimum of 18 inch culvert. Um, and I think you would have a hard time getting it in there um, because of how much ledge mm -hmm. is in that road. Um, so that would require multiple loads of gravel um, to get enough cover to do it, I believe. Without looking at it, I can't saying and even looking at it you're not going to know if you're going to hit ledge you know a few inches in or a foot in but um i i don't really hear one way or the other i guess um if, if the, the caveat being the water bars work um culverts work well when they're taken care of when they fail they fail fail miserably and it will so he doesn't like the water margin because Correct. of the uh, divot that he has to go through. Well, so. slow down. <laughs> I mean, I, they yeah. literally, I see them drive by and I worry because we split our wood right up on our property on the top of the hill. And I worry driving the tractor down the hill when I drive it down that I'm going to hit one of them coming up the hill at 30 miles an hour. So, I mean, it's a steep hill. We all, we all did the site visit with the grant work. It's a steep hill. Yeah. They're coming down. So you don't let the water bars slow down. Yeah, well, if, it, if the water bars are working and you have yeah, history but, that tells us that uh, they would need to be replaced and, and you can't put it in, so right. I would say what's working up there. And like I said, we put thousands of that grant money up through there. Mm -hmm. So that leads into my second question. I have Lynch Hill, which is a um, class four in Brownsville that we did yeah, yeah, yeah. on. Both those roads um, desperately need to be graded um, to keep the shape. Right now, um, they're both uh, get uh, enough traffic that basically the tire tracks squish out the road. And so now you have wheel tracks that the water's just following. So without a grading, where they're gonna deteriorate rapidly from here. Um, Unfortunately, I'm quite certain to even grade them, I would have to put at least a load of material into each road. So I don't, first question I guess is whether the board is even amenable to me grading them, or um, second question is if it's not able to do it without adding material, if I have permission to add material as needed. First, uh, is it gradable on the earthly grader? I, mean, I, I don't know because it's been graded before with the great grant work when we added material it was graded it's just the wheel tracks are had you know done their damage and the water is now following the wheel tracks so just attempting to get a crown back in those two sections and this is um you should lynch hill and what was it the ground Browns, yeah. so is it the class four a or b these are both b so B is the right. is, is categorized as and ungrade no, no annual maintenance. Correct. Right. right. It's, it's known annual maintenance because you, 
I thought I was sorry. I, no, 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 just that, that you can't grade. A B means it's ungradable. Um, these were both ungradable before the grant work that we oh, did. Okay. So could have should four change. years ago, five so, years ago, we had right. back to back um, grant um, recipients that we uh, see our BCP through um, some money at us for um, class fours. Um, Right, so in our policy, we can upgrade the four B's to the four, four A's. Yeah. Yeah. And the caveat I'm done, you're right. The difference between the two is yeah. gradable and not gradable, right? Right. at least that's the policy. Right. So if they are gradable, then why don't we go ahead and um, basically be shaping them up to know. the best of my ability. But Having drawn up Browns on the road a couple weeks ago, I that place, I mean, that was as rough a road as I. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Is that what you talking? What are you talking about? So that would be only be from River Road to the end of our grant work. So where that ends won't be graded. The entirety of Brownsville will not be graded. Just or oh, just okay. a grant. Oh, right. So we're talking about. All right. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. The, just that bottom section, basically? Right. Right. That, that makes the top of Brownsville is ungradable. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering because yeah. I was just thinking, yeah. Brownsville Road is a, is a mess. It's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Culverts are jumping right out. Yeah, so it would be like a class 4A to where the grant ends. That's correct. B right. Because we added material with the grant. Yeah, no, and then so it would be a B after that. Correct, and it will not get done. So it would be the same with the shell, it would just be that. Correct. To the, basically to the top of the hill. I think that makes sense to kind of preserve our investment. Yeah, that if we don't, it will deteriorate rapidly from here. And there's no guarantee that it won't anyways, but um, it gives us a chance to at least no, um, that's, salvage that's some of our Those work. are pretty good. I mean, those, yeah, they came out, both came out quite nicely. May so. yeah, I add that the select work needs to like start maybe meeting with you on an annual basis or biannual to start upgrading this these things and upgrading it on the website so it's a class a a class b class four road you know like make it part of your road maintenance policy or something that you have an annual meeting or biannual whatever it may be and uh because the select board is really behind the ball of this i mean it really can i say something yes i'm a ball just about a volunteer on this board and i don't have a lot of goddamn hours here and i'm really getting tired of being well the select board should do this let me do that i'm really your responsibility. fed up with it i really am it's your responsibility i do my job as best as i can travis it's a volunteer job you know what? Now lean yeah. off, for Christ's sakes. I'm just saying that it would be no, Travis, something we need to come Jesus up with something. Christ. Well, you're not even following your own policy. Well, we do follow our policies, Travis. And you know what? Uh, and yes, we I'm really sorry do. The criticism comes down. I am sorry for that. Great. And I understand no. that you guys are all volunteers. Right. You, you don't want to take a lot of my personal time double checking. Doing my checks and balances of what's going on in here. There's a lot of talk behind closed doors in here. There is no. There is Travis. You come up with these theories, and you know what? I need really, to bring this up. It's really, you know what? I've it's had not a fear. Enough. Thank you. Thank had you had enough. I've had enough discussion tonight. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, um, thank you, Ray, um, as well for your everyone's time. And again, uh, I certainly respect and thank everyone for the time and efforts that you gentlemen and ladies um, put in here. And certainly nothing is perfect, but we are striving to do the best that we can at all times and be fair and equal to all. And I think we do a great job of that. Thank you. Um, Martin, what else did you have for us? Okay, so just so that we can clarify, you are okay with me grading? That yes, and using it as a material. If I have to. Yes. Minimal amount. Okay. Um, the real, the biggest reason I came in tonight is um, a new truck order. Um, typically, I'd be waiting till fall um, budget season to be asking for the purchase of a new truck. Um, cabin chassis are almost two years out, so we could order it today, and we wouldn't see that till twenty twenty four. Um, do you get price protection? <laughs> Not on the truck. No. 
they will not do that. Um, so just bring, trying to bring it to the board's attention um, that we basically need to consider, you know, at least getting an order in. Um, I've only talked to a couple truck manufacturers. I haven't gotten pricing on all of them. Uh, the only two that I think will allow us to basically put our name on a, on a build and get on the time is um, um, Clark's or now Allegiance truck and um, ATG out of New Hampshire, that'd be a Western Star or Freightliner, um, with the ca caveat that we get voter approval and then the purchase is complete. If we don't get voter approval, then they would just allocate the truck to somebody else. Um, right, if you're two years out, they can sell it. Exa exactly. They, anybody that had anything to sell right now would sell it in a heartbeat. Um, the trucks we order are completely standard trucks. They're not, I mean, they're automatics, but they're, there's nothing that would keep them from being able to move into uh, another town. The last two trucks that we've purchased have been stock trucks that um, Clark's had uh, built and we purchased from them. So that's why our uh, time frames worked out so well. Um, quite honestly, we probably should have been looking at this last fall, um, but I wasn't aware until this spring how dire the uh, cabin chassis market was. And that's across the board on, on all of them. So I know, I know Stefan's been talking about that with basically um, cabin chassis as well. So I mean, obviously we don't make a decision tonight. I try to get some numbers together. Um, so we have at least a few bids. The only thing I will, at least on cabin chassis, um, Tenko and Fairfield, which were competing um, body manufacturers and, and uh, plow and wing um, built are both folded up and out of the state now. Um, so they're in New Hampshire, um, working out of the same building, um, working for the same company. <laughs> uh, but the uh, Viking, which is what we've been running for the last three trucks, they're, they've gone up over 20, about 20 grand in price for their mm -hmm. product. And I don't know if that's due to being basically the only it's probably a combination of two or just a fancy town plus, and plus and inflation plus and stuff. Um, so we're, um, the truck is right now about 135,000 and the body is about uh, 92,000 for a grand total of about 227,000 um, before trade, um, but we'll get 40 to 50,000 probably in trade would be my guess depending on, you know, maybe less, depending on how. Um, well, even used vehicles don't have more. Oh, yeah, so I should, that, they should be more so, so. But the so. trade would be for two more years. Correct. So we got two so more years. So I'm track. not um, that concerned with the 2015 Mac is the oldest truck. So it's basically, it's a 2014, it was bought in 2014, it's just here. So it's basically what we're looking at eight winners on it. It'll be have nine, probably 10 um, before it goes. And it's held up remarkably well. Um, so I'm not that concerned. I mean, obviously there's always things that are gonna pop up with an old um, vehicle right. like that. But um, my big concern is the next trucking line, um, you know, put that on now, we put off that much longer. So we may be looking at two truck payments and ideally that would be my um, recommendation is like in 23 and 24 or 23 and 25, something like that. I, I don't like it, um, but I'm more concerned with the uh, 2018 international than I am with the uh, 15. Yeah, really holding up. Yeah. And had some troubles. Um, Who, whose truck is that? Is that the one that Sean? Sean, Sean, Sean. Sean. Yeah. And that truck is currently sitting in Allegiance, um, waiting on a um, head. On a head? Yes. So, so that was the first when they changed over the engines, right? 
Yes, it's a 7600. Uh, Rodney's truck is an HV. Um, and that has held up well. Sean's truck has been kind of like the 2007 International that we had. That was kind of just a, Had it just no. minor stuff, just but almost nonstop. <clears throat> um, but his truck's been there for about a month, waiting on a head under warranty. Um, but in its national back order, and it's the 28th that on the list. So they can't give me a timetable of when that's 28th on the list on the list for a back order to head. So I would venture a guess that the international has a national back order that they're reluctant to put out and they're trying to come up with a fix before they put yeah. their heads on it. So yeah, he could run the truck around here. He plowed all winter with it, no problems. Mud season came, he started hauling on the interstate, hauling up on the interstate, radiator, radiator holes blew once. We put new holes and we planned on it. Figured it was, you know, something, you know, um, same thing, ran it around here for, plowed a little bit more, month season, went for another load, couple trips in, blew again. So then we sent it to Allegiance, who did basically what we did, checked a few things, but put holes and clamps on it, and a new um, overflow full um, canister. Got it back, ran fine around here, got on the interstate, blew again. So I sent it back up there and told them, you know, need to figure it out. Yeah. And they supposedly did. Um, just a minor crack in the head, supposedly. So. Hmm. Well, hopefully by fall we get that. <coughs> and then, then, yeah, if you were going to order a truck that's two years out, I mean, I guess I probably know this, but I figured was. So anything we ordered, even this fall, say, after you bring me, you, we'd have to do a deposit. Is that, you'd have to uh, make a deposit or we make an order? No, 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 I think so. that they would be willing to wait for payment until a voter approval. It would hinge on voter approval. Right, I mean, for voter approval in 2023, yeah, we wouldn't get the trust in 2024. Right. But at that point, we'd have to give them a deposit probably, kind of thing? Probably, yeah. yeah. We don't they have actually yeah. require deposits. And as long as they have, have, had to they have an agreement from the town. Right, right. and you have voter approval there, they're good with it. And we have a good, good relationship with these, right. these yeah. manufacturers. So they are, you know, Clark says now allegiance, so it is different. Um, but same people there. Right. Um, but to what you're saying, we really should get something ordered by this fall because it's just it it would, then it goes out front ideally further. within the next month or yeah. so we would yeah. be able to send, right. at least get our names on the list, right. which would require us to commit to a build uh, or a cabbage passing mm -hmm. and uh, that. You know, yeah, let's figure it out. Let's you and I talk, and then figure out when we can bring it back and what you need for information for us. Mm -hmm. As we based on what you're telling me, it really doesn't matter. If, what the final price is because it's not the final price. It's not. It's not. The, the body and build of Viking is the only one I've gotten the price on um, because that's what I prefer for a build since they are the lowest in. Um, but obviously I'll check price on right. the other two, but um, they will lock in on that price oh, now. So that's good. Um, sale. Mm -hmm. so. All right. But, but otherwise, then we should. I don't know how you mean qualify with, you know, right, uh, what machine, you know, like, because we don't really know the final process on it. Exactly. Yeah. So let's figure out how we come up with an RFP to answer what questions we need to have answered. Okay. And then like, the last thing that I have um, is the um, gentleman on Spillway Road. Um, <laughs> so, um, oh, Sanbury's old place. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's noticed the uh, trees dragged to the apron and storm. Oh, well, yeah, one and a half that uh, the soft tree there. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah the gentleman at the end, um, yeah, hooked onto him with his pickup truck. Brought them, brought them from his land. Oh, and was that and deposited it? them on in the right way for the town? So. I don't know if we can reach out to him and just let him know that 
not acceptable. Yeah, all the old golden rules from all the end. So I was wondering where those, uh, yeah, would come from. And uh, if he squabbles, uh, Mark Austin actually witnessed him yeah. doing it. And so. Uh, have we been able to put it on? Saw our stuff down to keep the dust down in that area for him? Um, no, I have not done anything down on that end. Yeah, when Mark had asked at some point. At some point, I'm not yeah. doing it. Okay. Yeah. I know I have been uh, wet, so I'm going to do it. But yeah, so we could throw some like, chloride down there at yeah. any time. All right. Anything else? No, I can check. Is he yes, a I don't. He, I have to. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay. Um, so why don't we go ahead? We'll have to move into executive session. But let's find out. Is any other public stuff going on that we need to do? Martin, are you all good? Yeah. Um, do we have any new business? All right. So let's um, go ahead and move into executive session. Um, I have a quick question before you go into executive session. It wasn't clear to me. Um, did the road permit get approved or is it pending the walk? And nothing got approved tonight. It what? Nothing was approved tonight. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, everyone, uh, so make a motion to. Uh, Leave uh, public and go to executive session for employee relations. Be coming back out of the executive session and then adjourn. Yeah. Okay, I'll be waiting outside. Yeah. Uh, is there a second? <laughs> Any further discussion? All fair. Uh, and I'll invite Martin and in, uh, Rodney as well. Thank you. We'll see you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.